and welcome back to another video on my channel how are we doing today today i'm going to be doing the second part to my review of the lakeland smart smart touch induction hob as i am finally able to use it to cook things on so let's go as you will know from the first video of me reviewing this which i will link in the description below i bought it for myself as a christmas present and i bought it in the boxing day sale because i wanted to get it as cheap as possible which it didn't turn out to be saving any money but i thought you know, I like the look of it, why not get it? However, when I went to review it, it would not work because I needed some special, really special metallic, not metallic, magnetic pans so that it would actually connect to the hob, which I was not told about when I bought it. Or as far as I remember, there was no indication that I needed to buy extra things, meaning spending more money than I needed to which I found, as you will be able to remember if you watched the first video, incredibly frustrating, to say the least. And I only found out again from the first video that when I called the support number that I needed to get these special pans to be able to get it to work. So be aware if you're going to buy this yourself because, you know, if you are going to buy anything with induction, you're going to need special pans for it or pans that specifically say they are for induction hobs. After the video, I did some research about what pans I would need to be able to get this to work. And I looked on Argos and Amazon and they were only sold as like sets of pans. And that's a problem for me down here as I have very little storage, as you guys will have known, as you guys will know from my studio transformation video, part one, which I will also link in the description if you want to watch that. So I decided that I only wanted one frying pan and one saucepan, but they had to be in a dynamic, dynamic, diameter restriction because this can only take 26 centimeters in diameter on the saucepan so i couldn't obviously go 28 30 gram 30 grams that's the cooking mind 30 centimeters 38 centimeters which is both good and bad at the same time because it narrowed down the search but it didn't make it any easier to choose a pan any less than that and i also wanted to get lids as this provides protection for my surroundings and also if i need to cover something and simmer it i've got the lids to be able to do that in the end, after all my research, I decided to go with John Lewis because they had some reasonably, reasonably priced saucepans and pans that weren't going to cost the same amount as getting an entire set. And I knew that if there was ever a problem, I could take it back to them. And they're a trustworthy brand, plus they're high quality as well, which I really liked. So my dad took me to my local John Lewis, which happened to have a huge section, so it took ages to look around everything. So I wanted to get specific ones in mind because I wanted to get quite cheap ones. But then after speaking to one of the sales representatives or the salesman, so to speak, he said, yeah, it wasn't he, he said that basically if you've got a cheaper one, it won't have as strong a magnetic pull or convection heater thingy as a more expensive pan would do which makes sense you know you're paying more for the money so i went around for ages just using my phone because this is magnetic to do it to all the pans which was why it took so long to be honest with you it just it took ages but thankfully most of their pans were suitable for induction so that actually really helped in a way because i wasn't having to narrow my search so much as having a bigger selection which i didn't think i'd be able to get hold of Another sales representative came around actually while I was looking around and they said that it'd be better to buy a set, but I didn't, obviously I said, look, I can't, that's not going to be helpful for me. And she said, no, 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 if you go for like the t -Fowl, I think it's Ingenio or Ingenie set, you can get it so that it's really good storage. And it did look amazing. I'm not going to lie. It looked brilliant, but it was £200. And even if I was actually, no, yeah, it was on sale and it was like £175, which is good you know, on sale and that, that's excellent. But the downside is I didn't need, one, I didn't need as many as I was gonna, that the option was available. And two, I didn't need to, oh, excuse the trains, I'm sorry, I have to talk over it. I don't have a mic yet and I just can't annoy, avoid the background noise. So where was I? And it looked amazing, the storage capability was great. But then if I bought if I just bought a set of saucepans and a frying pan, I would then need to buy the lids separately for the frying pan and the lids separately for the saucepan, which would equal the same price as just getting the entire set, which was both great, a good thing and an annoying thing because I now know what I want to get when I've got the money and the space to be able to do it. Like I will probably buy them when I've got my own house, but for down here, no, it's not, it's not gonna work in my current situation. 
So after all that pre-information, this is what I got. I got this, is it on here? Yeah, it is on here. Sorry, I've, underneath you, I've got the prices and the sizes because I will lose track of them. So this is for the frying pan. This is a frying pan. It actually says a saucepan lid, but it happens to fit my frying pan. And it's 24 centimetres in diameter. And I just wanted this in case it said in a recipe, leave to cover. No, cover and simmer and things like that. It just made it a lot easier, which I didn't think I'd be able to find, which is really, I'm really quite happy that I was able to. Can I do this without breaking everything? And the answer is probably no. <laughs> Come on, love. There we go. So I got this saucepan, which is actually quite small. I'm not, it's smaller than I was planning on buying. But what I liked was it was a say 18. Oh, by the way, this was how much was it? This was an extra 11 pounds, but you know I needed it and I, f I felt I needed it so it was worth the money this saucepan is 18 centimeters in I, th I believe the words diameter I could be wrong but it can hold two liters of product produce and that's what I liked about it and it came with the lid anyway and this cost how much did this cost this cost 35 pounds which is okay and finally, I got this, no, not finally, I got one other thing. I got this frying pan, which is 24 centimetres, which fits the saucepan lid really, really well. And finally, oh, how much was that? That was 30 pounds. The frying pan was 30 pounds. And then I finally got this, which is some placemats for me to be able, placemats, what, what are they called? Are they called trivets or placemats? I don't know. But basically when I finish cooking, it gives me somewhere to put the saucepan while it's still hot, which I think is an excellent idea. And this cost me, how much did it say this cost me? This cost me six pounds for two, which isn't too bad. I don't mind spending the extra money, to be honest with you, because it's John Lewis and I trust John Lewis branding. I've brought plenty of things from them. My big computer, which I've had for about, I had that while I was being homeschooled. So that's easily, what, I'm 22 now. That's easily six years. That works like a treat. So, you know, I trust John Lewis and they do do high quality things. The money is worth it. So I was happy to go with them. Now that I've talked about all that, let's actually go on to something else. I actually love the way these look. I think they look so pretty and sleek and amazing. But as I said, the only downside to doing this, buying these pans, which I absolutely love, the only downside to it is that I had to then spend an extra, how much was it? 82 pounds? on top of the pan, on top of the hob, which was £99.99p and p or £99.00. And, zero zero. and it's just like, you know, why couldn't, why couldn't you have just told me and it would have saved all this excess horror? <laughs> However, if you were to buy the set of the pans, it would cost £182. 182? 108, sorry, again, I've got the notes on you. What does it say? If you bought the set, it would cost around £180. And as I say, the Ingenio price was 175 So, you know, I mean, I saved £100 in total, but that's because if you knock the price of this off, that would be £82, take away six, that's 76 So these were £76. And then I didn't, you didn't have to get the lid. So that would be... 34, 35, 30, 65. So, you know, these last two bits were optional to me, but I felt I needed them. You know, what more, where, what more can I say about it? So just give me one second while I wash these all up so they're ready for me to use for you guys. And then I will be back and we're gonna make some scrambled eggs as a demonstration because scrambled eggs is one of my favorite foods in the entire world. Right, now that I've done all that, I'm actually just going to use the frying pan. I don't think I'm going to need the lid, but I thought I'd keep it with it anyway so that they stay together and as a family. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually open the instructions and do from the instructions that I was supposed to do last time, as I think that's going to be a done sight easier. Easier. Turning on the hob. Place the pan with food on the hob. See, this is where I get confused. Because it says with food on the hob, place the pan with the food on the hob. So does that mean? Right, okay, so that, that's, that's on there. 
oh you can feel it you can feel the magnetic that or it's just heavy so i'm going to plug this in please just don't explode on me okay okay step one done turn on the hob by pressing and holding down the on off so that's that okay so what mode do i want setting the mode so i'm gonna go pan fry because i'm effectively pan frying Right, okay, so I've selected that. So which one, it said something before, the power temperature can only be changed on the pan fry. Oh, I can turn the temperature down. Ooh, okay, good, I like this. Right, okay, so where does it say for the timer? Timer, okay. I'm gonna set this for like half an hour, which isn't a time I need, but I'd prefer have it than not you know i prefer have the time than not i do that with the oven actually i just keep it on okay so this induction hob was a timer function allows the food to cook for a certain amount of time before switching off this prevents the food from boiling dry or burning let's move that maybe yeah oh oh you can feel it blimey you get hot quickly right okay so i'm actually just gonna go for this oh i really need a bowl Got my bowl. So let's place you here for the icing. So let's put some butter on. This is how I make my scrambled eggs day today anyway, guys. So another recipe you're gonna learn today. Just put a knob of butter. Oh, blimey. That is really hot. Okay, I probably chose the wrong setting for this, but it's working. Okay, I'm gonna change the mode to simmer because I think that's going to be better. This is much hotter than I usually have it, by the way, but, you know, I went on the wrong setting, so that's my problem, not yours. Oh, good, that's cooled right down. So let's move this butter around, get that love in it. Okay, oh, that was interesting. It turned off when I moved the pan, which is really good, the illumination light, so I'm actually going to char block it. So now nothing can really be changed. So just gonna chuck these eggs in. Okay, put that there, put that here, put that here. And then I'm just gonna smudge it around until all the eggs cooked. This is working super well. A lot of smoke though. Let me know if you're a microwave scrambled egger or a fry scrambled egger in the comments below because I can do both to be honest. I didn't know that you could do it on a frying pan until about six years ago. So, doing well there. Blimey. This really does work quick, I'll give it its credit. Now I like to overdo them slightly, so I know that it's completely cooked, and that's it. That is my scrambled eggs cooked. Okay, so let's take you off, pop you in here. I'm having this for lunch by the way, I'm not wasting the food, this is going to be my lunch for today. Okay, well I know the frying pan works anyway, and I'm doing a recipe really soon to be able to test the hob as well. But they're both in the same thing, so I'm really happy about it. Child safety lock, done that. Okay, then it goes on to what the problems are. So now I guess I can just, to turn off the hob, press the on off switch. And that's it. I am super impressed with that. Okay, let me just move this stuff out of the way and clear up and then I will get right back to you. Well, that was a super, super quick demonstration. I wish I had actually two things to be able to show you in the end. I didn't realise it was going to go as amazing as it did. I thought that this was really, really great. Other than the fact that I didn't know I needed to buy, I'm only going to repeat it this one last time, other than the fact I didn't need to buy no 
other than the fact I didn't need to know that I needed to buy those other pig in pans, this is an excellent product. I don't have a way of showing all the different things, all the different settings, and I, to be honest with you, wouldn't actually know how to do it and what they mean. So other than that, it is really, really good. I would recommend it. Just be aware of the other pans and the pots and pans and things to work on this. I did not know about it, as you know, and I wish I did, but it's done. And I'm really happy with the result, and I got two pans in the process of doing this, which I didn't think I was going to get until I got my new, till I got my house that I'm going to get eventually. Don't know when, but eventually. So, and that is it. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Don't forget to check out all the links in the description, as I love them all and wouldn't put them there if I didn't, including everything that I've used in today's video in terms of the hob, the pans, and the lid, and this, and also the part one video to testing this hob out. Let me know about anything you think I should try on this hob, in terms of recipes or anything you like. Continuing on from that, also let me know in the comments of anything else you'd like to see me make gluten or yeast free, as I do both. And finally, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe if you want to see more. And I will see you next time. Bye!